Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa and I'm an Australian expat living in Amsterdam. I moved to Amsterdam with my husband in October last year and basically this is my channel where I just make videos about expat life and share some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Uh, so today my video is going to be about cost of living in Amsterdam. I'm going to break down how much my husband and I pay in rent, bills, taxes and food. We're both in our 30s. We don't have kids, we don't have pets, we don't own a car here and we don't have any major health or medical expenses as well. So just keep those things in mind as I go through the expenses. So number one, I'm going to start with rent. Rent is going to be your biggest expense when you move to Amsterdam. For us, we pay 15.50 euros per month in rent. This amount excludes utilities, so we have to pay all our bills separately. The apartment that we got was fully furnished. It's 55 square meters, and I would say in terms of location, it's about a 10 to 15 minute bike ride to the city center. Um, we're quite close to a tram station and there are lots of shops near our area. The so number two on the list are your monthly bills. We pay a water bill, we pay an internet bill, we pay health insurance bill, we pay a mobile phone bill, and we pay gas and electricity bills. So that's quite a lot of bills and I'm gonna go through each one and tell you how much we spend. The first one is drinking water. We spend 16.90 per month on our drinking water bill. How much you spend really depends on whether you have a water meter or not. Um, in our case, we just pay a flat rate of 16.90 per month. Generally speaking from my own research, uh, I think the average drinking water bill cost comes to about 15 to 20 euros per month. The second bill that you will pay is internet. Um, here in the Netherlands, it's very common to bundle your internet and your online TV services together into one package. In our particular case, we could only choose from one provider too. So we didn't really have a lot of options in terms of what packages we could purchase. If I'm being completely honest with you, my husband and I barely use the online TV package. I think we've only used it maybe two or three times and that's because everything is pretty much in Dutch and we don't speak Dutch. So a lot of the programs, you know, we just don't understand. Because of that, you know, if there was ever to be an option where we could just choose internet and ditch the online TV um, service, then we probably would take that. But so far we haven't really got that option available to us. The third bill that you will have to pay is health insurance. So in the Netherlands, health insurance is mandatory for everyone. You have to get some kind of basic health insurance package. Our health insurance provider is Loonzorg, which is specifically designed for expats only. We pay 112 euros per month for this service. On top of that, we also have supplementary dental insurance that we have with Silver and Croix, another major health insurance provider. For that, we spend 13.46 euros per month per person. That means in total, we are spending 125.56 euros per person per month in health insurance costs. And that equates to 251 for the both of us. If you want to know more about Loonzorg, I do talk about it in one of my older videos, which is called Tips on Moving to Amsterdam. I'll link it up above me if you are interested in this and feel free to check it out. The next bill that we pay on a monthly basis is our mobile phone bill. This one's quite straightforward. We just pay a flat rate of 12 euros per month. We're with Labara. It's a rolling contract and we get uh, 4G internet and five gigabytes in data. And then finally, gas and electricity. So we pay a flat rate of 125 euros per month for both gas and electricity. From my own research, you should generally expect to pay about 100 euros to 150 euros per month. There are, however, three things I should note about gas and electricity. So firstly, um, you know, we moved here during the winter and autumn months, so it's a lot colder and darker during those months. And as a result, our gas and electricity bill is going to be a lot more expensive in those months than say the rest of the year. 
That is yet to be seen, but I think that's a pretty fair assumption to make. The second thing to note is that we are currently living in a pandemic. And as a result, there is a lockdown and we all are staying at home a lot more than we usually would. For instance, if you usually have an office job, you're probably going to be expected to work from home, which means you're probably going to be using the heater more. You're going to use the lights more. Again, all these extra costs are involved simply because you are at home a lot more than you usually would be. One thing that's interesting about the Netherlands is unfortunately any additional energy costs that you incur as a result of working from home um, you can't really get a tax deduction for that simply because you were working from home and I think that's something that was worth noting because in Australia you can definitely get a tax deduction for every single hour that you work from home during the pandemic. Um, so if you're coming from a country where you have a similar system in place, it's important to note that you won't get these kind of tax benefits in the Netherlands. It's quite difficult to prove apparently like a home office and things like that. The third thing to note is that with your gas and electricity, you're going to likely be charged a flat rate regardless of your actual usage costs in that given month. So for instance, we pay a flat rate of 125 euros per month but last month we actually spent a little less than 125 euros in gas and electricity regardless we had to pay that flat rate how it works is that any extra money you spend for that given month you will eventually get refunded that amount later in the year if your flat rate works out to be less than your actual usage costs you will be asked to pay the extra amount later down the line as well with our provider um, we also found out that you can slightly adjust the flat rate online so for instance if um, you feel like okay, that, that flat rate is a bit high I want to reduce it by five to ten euros you can do that and we were told that after a six month period if the total average of our energy bills comes to less than the flat rate that we have been paying then we can adjust or lower that flat rate even further so if i was to add up all those bills that i just talked about in total that comes to 474 euros per month that we spend in bills alone that's a lot of money <laughs> All right, so number three on the list is annual taxes. This is something that kind of took us by surprise when we first moved here because in the Netherlands, you actually pay quite a lot of your income towards tax. Uh, but turns out here, you also have to pay some additional taxes. No! There are two major taxes that you need to pay. One is a waste tax and one is a water tax. How much you pay depends on how many people are living in your household. Firstly, I'll talk about the waste tax. If you live in a multi-person household, which is two or more people, including children, then you will pay 435 euros every year. If you live in a single person household, you will pay 326 euros every year in waste taxes. So for us, my husband and I were two people, that means we pay 435 euros every year. The second tax you'll pay is the water tax. So in addition to how many people live in your household, how much you pay also depends on whether you are a renter or whether you own the property. We um, come under the two or more persons per household category and we pay 285.85 euros every year in water tax. If you are living alone in a rented house, you would pay 173.71 euros per year in water tax. If you wanna see the cost for every single different scenario, I'll put a link in the description box below so you can check that out. We both still have a Swap Fiat's bike subscription and the cheapest package that you can get on Swap Fiat's is 16.90 euros per month. That's just for the basic bike. For the both of us, that works out to be 33.80 euros per month. I think the time has really come for us to start looking um, at a secondhand bike to just buy. From my own research and looking at different bike shops around Amsterdam, I think that you can probably pick up a 
pretty decent secondhand bike for 150 to 200 euros. With transportation, this is again a really tricky one. Uh, we have barely used public transport since arriving because we came during the pandemic and then the lockdown happened and the government said, do not travel unless it's absolutely necessary. So we haven't really been using a lot of public transport. And on top of that, we have a bike. So when you move to Amsterdam or if you're living in other parts of the Netherlands, you're going to realize that your bike will be your main mode of transport. So for this reason, I've listed our transportation costs as being zero euros. According to the official GVB website, a one hour tram or bus ride will cost you 320 euros one way. If you know where you're going to be living and where you're likely to be regularly traveling to and from, then I recommend you download the 9292 travel app. Basically, you can input your current location and your destination, and the app will tell you exactly how much a one-way fare will cost and what mode of transport you need to take from A to B. So that's kind of a good way of figuring out how much you might spend in transportation costs. And another very important thing to note about transportation is that here in the Netherlands, it's very common for Dutch employers to cover your transportation costs from home to the office which I think is really really cool so if you are signing up to a new job in Amsterdam I think it's worth making sure you look at your contract to see whether those transportation costs will be covered by your employer because it could be the case that you won't have to spend very much in transportation at all at least Monday to Friday right when you're going to work that's a really cool bonus to have, um, so make sure you check that out. And I should note here too that next week I'm going to dedicate a whole video about transportation in the Netherlands and also how you can save some money with transportation. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that video when it comes out. The next category I'm going to talk about is groceries. I calculated that on average, we spend about 350 euros per month in groceries and food alone. So when I say food, it also includes any kind of takeaway that we're getting or any food that we're buying like at the market. Some things to note with our grocery bill, my husband and I mostly eat a plant-based diet. Uh, we occasionally eat fish, but we don't buy any meat. We also try to to meal plan around the weekly specials or the weekly catalogs at all the different supermarkets in Amsterdam. Um, I actually did a video about this process and how we try to save money with grocery shopping. I'll link it up above me if you want to check out that video. Might be helpful for you. Another thing to note is that both my husband and I are very big Too Good To Go users. Again, I did a video on this app recently. I'll link it up above me if you want to see what that app is all about but essentially it allows us to buy relatively discounted food we both don't have very expensive tastes in food i would say so we are more than happy to buy you know the generic brand if it looks like it's comparable quality to an internationally recognized brand we're not fussy in that regard we're very happy to just eat what's seasonal or locally grown. One tip that I can give you is to check out the numbio.com website. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is a pretty helpful website that gives you a very accurate cost breakdown of how much your normal food is going to cost you. I think the prices for those food products are quite accurate. And then on top of that, my other tip would be to go to uh, some of the supermarket websites. So the major supermarkets here are Albert Hein, Jumbo, Audi. They list the prices of all their food online. So just, you know, pull up your Google Translate, look up the Dutch word for bread type in bread in your Albert Hein website and you'll get an idea of how much it's going to cost you on average for the food products that you would typically buy, say if you were back home. And the other thing to note is that my husband and I aren't really getting takeout that often. We maybe only order takeout about once every fortnight, if that. We generally prefer to make our own coffees at home rather than buying coffee outdoors. 
Uh, that's just both from a cost perspective, cost saving perspective, and also from an environmental perspective because we don't really like using coffee cups and things like that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it, the whole eating out thing. I find that compared to Sydney, eating out here is pretty pricey. From our own experience, an average no frills kind of meal will cost you about 12 to 15 euros per person. I'm talking about a very average kind of meal like pizza or Indian or Chinese something like that you know I'm not talking about wagyu beef <laughs> or um, some fancy pants restaurant or trendy cafe I made a list of some of the things that we have ordered in the past and how much it cost us and give you an idea of the quantity as well so we've ordered a sushi platter for two that was 25 euros and there were no leftovers we've ordered indian takeaway for two that cost us 26 euros and there were enough leftovers for lunch for two the next day we've ordered indonesian takeaway for two that was 25 euros and there was again enough leftovers for lunch for two people the next day a pizza will be about 15 euros um, maybe enough leftovers for one person the next day pizza is kind of universal wherever you go Syrian takeaway for two we paid about 40 euros and there were enough leftovers for lunch for two people the next day and a cup of medium coffee will cost you about 350 to 4 euros if you are curious about how much takeout is going to cost you can also go on uber eats or you can also go on thois besorgd thoisbesorgd.com those are the two major food delivery companies in Amsterdam and yeah you can just type in whatever cuisine you generally like to order that'll give you an idea of how much the food is going to cost you if you do order takeout the other budget tip I can give you is that it's generally going to be cheaper for you to buy your takeout directly from the restaurant rather than if you ordered it via Uber Eats or Thwise Bizogged. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot how to pronounce it. In summary, for both my husband and I, we are spending an average of 2,468 euros per month in absolute basic living costs. 62.8% goes to rent, 21.6% goes to utilities and taxes, 14.2% goes towards groceries and food, and 1.4% for miscellaneous subscriptions, which is really our swap fee at Spike subscription at the moment. So if you are coming here alone and you plan to house share with another person, then I think it's safe to kind of assume that you can divide our monthly costs by two and you would maybe roughly spend about 1,234 euros per month, more or less, give or take. Please remember that these are the absolute minimum basic living costs involved. I haven't included all these other things that you probably will need to spend money on, like, you know, getting your hair cut. Uh, maybe you like to get manicures every month. I don't know. That's another cost. Netflix, gym subscriptions, etc., etc. I haven't covered any of those things. I'm talking about your basic skeleton living costs here. 62.8% of our monthly expenses go towards our rent. I think that kind of really underscores how impactful the amount you pay on rent will be on your overall living costs in Amsterdam. So it's really important, I guess, that if you want to save a bit of money on a month to month basis, cutting your rent is probably the way to go. Your rent is really going to vary depending on where you wanna live, the type of apartment or house that you wanna live in, the type of uh, facilities that it has. So I would really encourage you to really figure out what area you wanna live in in Amsterdam and then go on Funda to get an idea of how much um, the rent is going to differ between those different areas in Amsterdam and then figure out which place is going to be suitable for you and uh, which place you're going to actually 
be able to afford on a month-to-month -month basis. My final tip in this video is to check out the tax.nl. This is a really helpful website that's going to show you how much of your gross salary is going to end up in your hands after tax because in the Netherlands we do pay a lot in taxes and so you know maybe you've already got a job offer here and it might sound like you're getting a lot of money but when you take out the taxes then um, you probably won't end up with that much at all. If you like this video and want to see more videos about expat life and expat advice in Amsterdam, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe as well because that way you won't miss out on any new videos that come out. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my next video is going to be about the whole transportation system in the Netherlands and also how you can save some serious money with transportation in the Netherlands. Otherwise, that's it, and I guess I will see you in the next video. See ya, bye.